Welcome back guys to another Odyssey video. This week we will completely break Odyssey's build system. Not in a bad way, but in a way that demonstrates how superior it is when you know what you actually have to use. I have created a build that has 575% critical damage, 100% crit chance, it has up to 300,000 Valra damage and you can make it in 10 minutes. Because I only used rare items, which are incredibly easy and fast to find at any blacksmith and I'm still able to deal massive amounts of damage and probably beat everyone else's legendary or epic build out there. So what I want to demonstrate is that by picking the correct items with the correct engravings, you don't have to grind for hours to get the correct perfect epic sword. If you just get a rare sword with Valra damage and damage swords, you will get almost the same damage as by using a perfect epic sword. That's because every 30% damage swords engraving is almost as strong as another 100% Valra damage and the additional 50% critical damage is almost completely negligible. A lot of people only focus on crit, 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 but this is actually not what gives you the most damage. Weapon damage is what you have to focus on and this is so important because you can find any perfect rare gear in only 1-4 to four minutes at every blacksmith. You don't have to grind for hours. And the same also applies for your armor items. Every armor item can be found within just 1 minute and it will be just as strong as the best legendary or epic armor. Because you always get a set bonus that is completely irrelevant on most legendary sets and for the epic gear you will most likely engrave 20% warrior or 20% assassin damage anyway, so you don't really lose anything. In fact you can make a perfect rare build with some tweaks that almost reaches 300,000 warrior damage. So if you don't succumb to the ultimate perfectionism, you can do this build within just 10 minutes. Most of the damage will come from very few specific engravings like the champion Ostraka from Corfu Island or the big horn bow anyway that gives you a major part of your damage. Just the Corfu engraving alone with damage conversion will give you over 300% warrior and assassin damage, which makes the rest of your gear actually less relevant. But now let's check out the damage values. We will get over 1.8 million damage just with a single light attack, we will get 2.8 million damage with a heavy attack, almost 9 million damage with a charged heavy attack, a juicy 4.7 million damage with Ring of Chaos, 17 million with Fury of the Bloodline and over 30 million damage with an overpower attack. Of course your range damage is absolutely insane as well, with 5.5 million damage for a multi shot, over 10 million damage with a devastating shot only using rare items, 11 million damage with a predator shot and even 9 million damage with ghost arrows. Of course this crazy rare build will be an absolute mercenary killer, being able to one shot every mercenary with any kind of assassination with any arrow or whatever you dream of. The Aris Madness activation will still be over 44 million if you attack a Polemark from behind and still over 9 million damage if you attack regular enemies. And we can still do all the same tricks as with any perfect epic or legendary build. Especially when you compare this build to a legendary build, you will see that there is actually no difference, except that you don't have to pay any money for making a rare build that is beating every legendary build you can make in this game and even every poorly crafted epic build as well. And that is by only using items that you can find in less than 10 minutes. But let's finally check out the build. In the all rare version we have 276,000 Valra damage and 740,000 assassin damage, which is just as high as the best epic builds and higher than every legendary build I ever made. And you can push that even further when you just swap a few of these items. Of course the big bow fits great into a rare build because it is a rare item itself. The big bow doubles all your warrior damage by a factor of 1.6 by adding all its 6495 dps to your left melee weapon. The big bow is a glitched item and the only item that does this trick. If you haven't done it already definitely use your 200 free credits to get this item. On our left melee weapon we will use a perfect rare sword with Valra damage and damage swords and here we engrave the plus 100% damage but health cap to 25%. Of course you could also just use armor penetration instead if you want to play at full health. It will be much much faster to find a perfect rare sword with these engravings than a perfect epic sword because a perfect epic sword requires one additional engraving which lowers your chance by a factor of 20. You will have found 10 perfect rare swords before you find only one perfect epic sword. And that is why getting rare items is so powerful and so fast. Just use a rare item before you will eventually find an epic item later in your playthrough. 
On the second melee weapon, I also use another perfect rare sword with warrior damage and damage swords, and here I engrave the convert 50% hunter damage to all damage to get the most out of our core for engraving. Please be aware that when using rare items, definitely go for melee weapons that have warrior damage and damage with their weapon types. For example, damage with swords, damage with heavy blunts and damage with spares. Never go for a melee weapon that has warrior damage and critical damage. Critical damage is way less important and way way weaker than weapon damage. Melee weapons without weapon damage should actually never be used. And that is also true for rare items. So don't fall for a critical damage item. You have to get weapon damage, damage with swords, damage with heavy blades, whatever first. On the big hand bow we will just engrave 10% crit chance to get to 100%. Of course if you have hate or sapo or the sword of action you can definitely use them instead of using rare swords. I just wanted to show you how much damage you can get by only using rare items. So if you have any of these two weapons definitely use them because they have the better engravings. On the armor items we also continue with the same principle that weapon damage is mandatory and should be used first before you go for any critical damage or critical chance. So we go for a helmet that has warrior damage, 30% damage swords and then we engrave 20% crit chance at full health. Of course you could also get a helmet with warrior damage and 20% crit chance and then simply engrave damage swords on it, that would be the same. You can do this with any item and that will greatly increase your chance of finding the correct piece. For our bracers we will use warrior damage, 10% crit chance and 100% critical damage. Again these can be in a different order. And on the belt we will also use warrior damage, 10% crit chance and 100% critical damage. For the torso we will use warrior damage, 50% critical damage and here we engrave the core for engraving with plus 100% all damage but minus 100% resistances. And last but not least on the boots we have warrior damage, 20% crit chance and 100% critical damage. I don't expect you to make this build exactly as it is, because of course using epic items would be better. But if you can't find a specific epic item, these rare items are the ones you should use instead. And getting all these items together will only take you 10 minutes, which is a great thing about it. So before you waste a lot of time grinding for perfect epics, just settle for some rare items until you find your epic ones. By using only rare items you can achieve 662% warrior damage, 120% damage swords, 100% crit shots and 525% critical damage. And by just changing a couple of items you can bring this build to reach even 300,000 warrior damage. All you have to do for that is replacing your melee weapons with perfect epic weapons such as Hater Sarpe with warrior damage, 30% damage swords and 50% critical damage. And the other weapon could be just a sort of action with warrior damage, damage swords and fire damage. On the helmet then you should go for warrior damage, damage swords and daggers and damage swords. This is where the main increase in damage is actually coming from. And for the bracers you could use the stolen Izu bracers which will give you the additional crit chance which you can't use on your helmet. The three epic items are fixed items which are easily lootable from the friend in need quest in Attica you will get Hater Sarpe, just lie to Hater to keep the sword. The Sword of Axum can be looted from the Parthenon chest in Athens and the Stone Iso Brazers can be found in the third episode of the Atlantis DLC. All the used rare items can be acquired extremely fast from the blacksmith. If you want to make the same transmog as I did, you should go for the Ixion's Agony for your bow, the Chrysor transmog for your sword, the Athenian Brazers with decorated bronze, the Lawgiver belt, the bronze chest plate and the Athenian Greaves with decorated bronze. For the abilities we will use all the standard ones, we will start with 6th sense that slows down time and also helps you for your assassinations and your warrior attacks, get the poison and fire arrows and then either use multi shot, devastating shot or predator shot. Predator shot is the highest damage one and devastating shot is the easiest one to use. Totally get archery master for the additional hunter damage which we will convert into warrior damage which also refills your first adrenaline segment. Put one point here into overpower bow strike as a bridge and then go for three points on the ghost arrows. Go for the charged heavy attack and get the free bonuses from weapons master and gear master. And then you can get three points into flaming attacks. Of course if you engrave permanent fire damage on your sword you only have to go for one point on the flaming attacks because you have fire damage anyway. Get the 40% fire damage from the fire mastery. Then get the overpower attack which will one shot every boss in this game even with this build. Arus Madness if you have the Atlantis DLC definitely a must have. Furious of Bloodline the same if you have the Legacy DLC definitely get it. It still deals half the damage of an overpower attack and refills 4 adrenaline bars. 
definitely get Ring of Chaos for crowd control. You can get second wind for your health refill or you simply use the torch glitch if you know how to do that. And in the assassin tree go for shadow assassin which gives you 50% critical damage and an increased assassin damage. Pick up rush assassination, critical assassination is not needed but definitely go for stealth master to reduce all the noises you make and your footsteps and increase your out of combat damage overnight. The basic mastery point distribution should be 12 points on hunter damage because we will also convert that damage to be warrior damage, then 12 points on crit chance, crit damage and also headshot damage. In the warrior tab we will go for 12 points on warrior damage itself, then another 8 points on fire damage, 8 points on armor penetration. If you don't have so many points you can actually skip those. But here most important 15 points on damage sword, 15 points on the crit stuff, 12 points on the damage while full health and also 12 points on health gain per adrenaline spend. That one is actually optional so you can actually save those 12 points and if you also save those points on armor penetration and fire damage then you might only need 170 or 180 points to make this build. If you have more than 400 points of course you can max out the hunter damage, you can max out the crit chance, crit damage and headshot damage. Go for a couple of points here on the hunter stuff, adrenaline, not consume special errors and also damage of hunter abilities. Then in the warrior tab of course you will max out warrior damage and further down we will max out fire damage and armor penetration and also put a couple of points on damage dealt restored as health alongside with a general increase for all our abilities. And in the assassin tab we will go for damage whenever time is slowed down, max out assassin damage, absolutely max out damage swords, max out the critical chance, critical damage, damage while full health. If you have the points go for a couple of adrenaline increases, health gain per adrenaline spend and also damage for leads and bosses. Even more points could be spent on cooldown duration or even a general increase for your assassin abilities. So remember don't always go for perfection, if it takes too much time just use the rare items instead. I hope you really like this build, please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.